home of the melodramas. The building is a copy of the tomb, the uh, Birdcage Theater in Tombstone, Arizona, or is it Tombstone uh, and, and Theater in Tombstone? I'm not sure, but anyway, I just love it. It's still there. You can still be there, go there and have a moment. Every afternoon at four o'clock, I think they have a big old hoedown right out front and everything where there's all the hootin' nanny and, and screaming and dancing and having a good old time and everything. I love right in the middle, that daughter and father there. I know them from so many slides that I've been collecting. And their, their, their family, they went everywhere. And I don't know the daughter's name, but I just call her Daddy Long Legs. Um, but anyway, so yes, Knott's Berry Farm has evolved, emerged into a family affair. We have son Russell. We have son-in-law Ken running the preserving kitchen. We have Marion and Tony's sports shop also known as Dress Shop. There were a million, like, all kinds of shops and everything, just like there still are a ton of shops. But uh, we don't have Mary and Tony's Dress Shop anymore. Virginia's Gift Shop is still there. You know Virginia's Gift Shop right across from the fried chicken dinner restaurant? You know it, right? Started on a card table back in the 1930s. We have the Steakhouse run by Dwight Anderson, one of the son-in-laws, and we have the Railroad run by another one of the son-in-laws. So this is a family affair. I know. Here is the steakhouse, you guys. You gotta see this. Come on, steakhouse. I know you're there. There we are. What? Yeah, oh. I mean, I guess we might as well get it out in the open. Um, this is creative design genius at its greatest. Not terribly unlike the rest of Knott's Berry Farm. Amazingly art directed. These are not, this isn't Hollywood coming down here to do this. This is, you know, within the realm of the people at work here. They put this together, these amazing portraits. I love all the, don't you love all the Indian corn and the gourds hanging there and everything? And who, I want to know, came up with those stunning chairs? Wait, is it just me or what? I love that, like, the lady right in the middle drinking her coffee going, like, I cannot believe this place. I know. And look at her little Miss Pinky on the side there, like, slurping her coffee going, this is amazing. I love the lamps in the middle of the table. Don't you? I know. And here it is. Coming through in 1952, Walter Knott thought it would be a good idea. Well, we've got a ghost town. We got all this, we got all that, we got everything else. How about we get a train? So we went shopping for a train. He found one in Denver, Colorado, and here it is now. From 1883, I hereby do declare, I believe. Anyway, so he's like, okay, it's gonna be perfect. We'll put it there, it'll go around. It's gonna be great, everyone's gonna love it. I'm gonna love it, they're gonna love it. Oh, it's gonna be wonderful. And so then what happened was, um, well, he got the shipping bill and it was like $25,000 and he was like, ouch, that was way, way, way more than I thought for an engine and five coach cars and a caboose. But it didn't matter because from day one, radical success, people flocked to see that train and they, they had yet another reason, another moment, another experience, another memory to take away, another tradition to take away from visiting this enchanted place.